Okay. All right. Thank you guys all for coming. So, of course, we have another crazy global studies talk today. And, of course, um, global studies is a history certificate tied to the history program. And, yes, we do have some money for study abroad. So you want to try and hit me up for it? I know most of you are my students, so hi. And then there is our founder right there. So look in the back. This is Professor Khan right here waving. So, you know, like you really want to try to um, get to know him because we have many opportunities. So make sure you talk to us about global studies, right? And we give educational talks, which is what we're doing today. And of course, we have two very important people. So uh, this is Professor Chun from West Oahu. Guess what he teaches? He teaches a history of K-pop class and, of course, also a history of anime class, right? And then, of course, we have our very famous um, speaker as well, uh, Becca, who is from, formerly from the group After School. Okay. So I'm the warm-up comedian right now. No, just joking. Um, I'm just going to give you everybody, if it's okay with you, a 10-minute introduction to K-pop just so that you understand, and then Becca will be coming out, okay? So I'll keep this short, it won't be too long. So I um, just wanna start here. Okay, my name is Jason. Um, one thing you want to learn is K-pop has become popular worldwide. Um, when I was a uh, um, young um, uh, college student, I still remember buying Korean music in Korea in 1990s, bringing it back, I played it. My friends go, what is that? I go, it's K-pop. They go, you? What kind of music is that? They're like laughing at me, and now it's worldwide. This is BTS, and they have appeared on the uh, um, American Music Awards. This group is called Black Pink, just appeared on Good Morning America, just appeared on The Late Show. And what you want to realize is K-pop is what we call global music. It's global and it's local. Um, for example, of these um, members, one is Thai, um, the other is Australian, the other studied in New Zealand a long time. So what we call K-pop actually is a worldwide phenomenon, okay? Now, the thing that makes K-pop Korean is just really the Korean language. The music is indistinguishable from other um, musics. It's kind of like opera. It has to be in Italian to sound correct. K-pop needs to be in Korean to sound correct. Am I correct? The English K-pop sounds Okay, so this is something then that um, is, the, to me, the big feature. Now, the thing is you have to realize about K-pop is if you look at the Asian market, Korea only makes 2% 2 of the um, uh, world music market. Because of that, it must export. So K-pop is designed for export to other nations. The Korean market is too small to sustain K-pop um, only. That's why then you know, it goes all overseas. Now, the birth of K-pop can be seen in this song here, um, Nan Arayo, by So Teji Kwa Idol, So Teji and Boys. It was a hip-hop song. It kind of sounds like you know, Bruno Mars, uh, that uh, finesse song recently, right? It, it was, came out in 1992. It was a talent show on TV, and they scored the lowest of all groups. And yet, this started the boom. Now, the person who started really what we call K-pop is Lee Suman of SM Entertainment. And he was um, the brains behind exporting and making this entire K-pop um, phenomenon. Now, how do we really explain this? Okay, so we need to look at his early history when he was a young man to understand the roots of K-pop. So, So Teji came out, was popular, <clears throat> but Lee Suman grew up, you know, he, Lee Suman spread K-pop, but how? Well, when he was a um, you know, young man, he grew up in the time of military dictatorship and there was a censorship. So he went to study at Cal State Northridge. And while there, he watched the Michael Jackson video and other MTV videos and said, this is it. We'll do a Korean version of it. You see that? And so K-pop then really was, came so from American So why these corporations Whoa, to make... Here. Okay. Um, so it cost a lot of money to make K-pop. But when he made this group, he basically put together bands and then other companies started copying. So we have here the first generation of um, boy band groups. See that? And again, this is really at this stage in the 1990s aimed at domestic consumption, aimed for um, Korean audiences. Like, uh, how many know HLT and uh, um, Zekis, okay? Um, this is also the first generation girl groups, like SES. This is the um, uh, really ancestor of what we call um, after school. 
I see that, or um, F.I. Finkel. These other groups, really, if you look at it, they weren't as polished, really, and they weren't aimed for overseas audiences. Now, if you wanted to buy these, you had to um, go to Korea and get the CD, or get, have a friend in Korea send it to you. So at this stage, um, many Americans also played a part in K-pop. For example, um, this is um, <clears throat> uh, uh, it's a solid. They're actually Korean Americans. Korean Americans like Becca played a huge role in making K-pop because they could rap, they had the rhythm sound down, and so it gave an authenticity. So early K-pop was really built in part by Korean Americans. What happened in 1997? Korea went into an economic meltdown, and they had to borrow money from the um, International Monetary Fund. And this was very humiliating. Many Koreans sold their gold, whatever gold they had. They sold it as a gesture to show we're going to try to help get out of this budget deficit. But it was embarrassing to borrow this much money. So the Korean government realized it needed a new strategy. And the new strategy is a new economy. They're going to sell K-dramas overseas and K-pop. In other words, Korea will become a global cultural exporter. People laughed in the late 1990s when the Korean government said this. But <clears throat> this was the idea. Make dramas, make them available to people overseas, and make people want to learn more about Korea. Use this to also generate brand awareness. <clears throat> in the olden days, people, you know your Samsung phones, right? Now they're expensive, right, kind of. In the olden days, we called it Samsung. Nobody bought Samsung goods unless you had no money. And so what K-pop and Hollywood will do is make Korea cool again. You see that? That you want to buy Korean products because you see them being used on Korean um, dramas. There was a big problem. By 2005, YouTube had come on and all of these streaming services come on. You couldn't, the companies couldn't make money selling CDs anymore or DVDs. You see that? Because you could get it for free, you know, like illegally, but you could, or streaming. And so companies realize this, what are you going to do? We're not going to make money selling CDs anymore. We're not going to make money selling... Um, so here's the solution. In 2007, this is the seminal video, it's Wonder Girls Tell Me. The idea, give away your music for free, right? We all do that on YouTube. Give it away, you're going to then want to go to the concert, or you're going to want to buy their T-shirt for like $50, right? Or you're going to want to, you know, um, uh, go to Korea. So this is what Korea's strategy was. It was unheard of, giveaway for free. So after school then, you'd consider the second wave of girl groups, which is what Rebecca was part of. This is then on YouTube accessible. And how many of you um, grew up watch, listening to After School? Raise your hand. Right? Right? You did, right? If you haven't, go watch the video. Watch this uh, um, a Because of You video. It's cool. Choreographed dancing, um, you know, outsized personalities. Um, and so let me introduce you to Becca. She's a Honolulu resident, and she was actually recruited in 2008, and she went to um, um, uh, After School. She left. She was 18 years old. You see that? So she was one of the Korean Americans in this new wave of K-pop. Um, she was in after school for three years, and then she left and returned to a quiet life in Hawaii. Um, by the way, her Instagram account is X-O-X-O-B-E-K, V-E-K, okay? Um, uh, let me just show you her Instagram one more time so you can see it, okay? You know, if you want, you know, follow her on this account here. And so, um, I don't really need to introduce you much, but she can tell you about life in the uh, um, K-pop uh, world and what it was like to be a trainee, and afterwards we'll have a, a selfie um, photo session okay, as well. So everybody, please give a hand to Becca. Hey guys, check, check. Hi guys. Hi, thanks, Professor Jason. Uh, I'll back up just a second. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. So much. Okay, sure. Thank you. I was looking forward to the lay too. Um, <laughs> so actually, just a heads up, um, I actually just changed my Instagram handle. So it's Beck, B-E-K forum. I didn't let, um, you know, Professor Jason know, but we can talk about that later, but it's good. Um, so yes, I want to say thank you so much first of all, to um, Leeward Community College and Global Studies Talk and Certificate. Also, Professor Naid, if I said it right, and also Professor Jason and everyone here to make this happen. Um, so one second. 
So I'm happy to be here again, and thanks for being here, guys. And um, yeah, K-pop is a different world, and I just want to give you a taste of it, a little insider scoop of my personal experiences. And yeah, let's go. All right, I'm going to sit down, because so your necks don't hurt. <laughs> it's kind of high. <laughs> All right, thank you. OK, so there we go. I was born and raised in Hawaii. I was born in town, and then I lived in Eva, and then I lived back, I went back to town, lived in Macaulay side and things like that. Um, my mom, she was a single mom. I have a younger sister, and I have an amazing grandmother. So, you know, just grew up, nothing, nothing crazy, super, you know, it could be everyone's story or a lot of, of people's stories, right? Um, so yeah, I graduated from Moanalua High School. Yeah, I see someone there. <laughs> MOHS, yep. <laughs> but yeah, I graduated there 2007. And I wasn't an extraordinary student, but I was, I was average, but that's all right, you know? I, know. I know how to not give up and look for the answer, so there we go. Um, I used to surf. I'm trying to get back into active, uh, an active lifestyle. And um, yeah, I used to just hang out with my buds and skate, surf at Queens. That was my favorite spot, or canoes, longboard. And yeah, I was a very dark, I was darker Korean. I was very tan. <laughs> I'm very fair now, I'm naturally fair or lighter. But yeah, so that's me. And now we're going to go into how I got scouted. Um, so it was in at a Korean um, church volleyball tournament. So all these Korean churches were going against each other, you know, trying to play nice, right? <laughs> but um, yeah, so they were there. And I almost didn't go, but I did. And so I ended up going there. and. Um, Someone came up to me, this girl I knew, and she had a scout with her. And so she was a former Miss Korea. And so they came, and they were looking for people, I guess, but I didn't know. And um, anyways, they, they approached me, and she said, you know, I'm from this company, and da 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 would you be interested in auditioning? And to be honest, I was like, is this a scam? Like, I'm like, okay, if I'm gonna go to this audition, I need to like have let my family know and let them be with me. And if I don't come out in 10 minutes, then come after me, you know, come for me. So, uh, you know, I really thought it was kind of 50 50. So I did it. And so eventually, we went to the Ilikai Hotel, and that's where I auditioned. It wasn't anything glamorous as now. You know, they do it in convention centers. There's hundreds and hundreds of people sometimes auditioning. But for me, it was just me at the Ilikai Hotel uh, in the service room. It's sketchy. <laughs> it was very sketchy. But anyways, my mom was there. I think my sister too, but my mom. So right here, we're right here. But maybe the day before, or two days before, I was a little bit naive. I was like, oh, I just need to dance, you know, because I love dancing already. But what happened was they said, oh, yeah, and you have to sing two songs. And I was like, no ways. <laughs> I was like, I never sang a song, especially in front of, like, I did sing a song, but never in front of people, and let alone just one person recording you. You know, that's creepy, too. So, so I wasn't going to do it. And then my sister was like, hey, why don't you sing two, you know, Christian contemporary music songs, because that's what I was comfortable with. And so I did. And then, you know, obviously I did the audition. We're here now. We're at the auditions. I had to perform the two songs. Never sang in my life ever like that. And yeah, I did that. And then I danced. And they're like, we want to go for a second audition. So I did. And the CEO at the time, actually, he flew to Hawaii from LA to see me. And so we did that, and then they liked me. So that began my process. So I, I got scouted when I was 16, and I did go into K-pop officially in eight, when I was 18. So when I was 16, um, it was great, because I'm a high school girl, I got scouted, and you know I get to travel in the sense of go to Korea. I went every break, 
and on every break that I could, like winter break, summer break, and that was for months. So basically, I was kind of alone already in a sense of my mom would go with me, you know, like the first time. But then um, after, yeah, I would fly by myself, and it was awesome. Um, but yeah, so I trained a lot. It was like a work shift, 10 a.m. to I think it was maybe 6, 7. I was a minor, so still, that's late. <laughs> maybe 5, 6 p.m., let's say. Yeah, training. Um, yeah, let's, we can go to um, training first. Yeah, so training. So yeah, that's how I got scouted. And then I'm in training session and mode. And it was really fun. It wasn't hard. Um, and maybe it was because it was my age at the time or whatever it was. It was just really um, fun and natural. And so um, when I was 18, I left for Korea. And we trained for six, well, yeah, I trained for six months really quick, really hard. And um, we debuted. And uh, it was awesome. But, um, you know, I just, yeah, it was awesome. So we're going to go more into the K-pop world now. I know that um, we don't have a lot of time, but I want to kind of give you the meat of it, the, mo the meat, and then we can have the Q&A. OK. How are you guys doing? You OK so far? Too much information? It's all right. It's, it's, this is not going to be like a formal. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> it's not going to be like a <laughs> that comforts me. Hearts, everyone. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's not going to be formal. I'm in a sense of, I know it's, it's, we're at school and stuff, but I just want to be really honest with you guys about K-pop, you know, um, and, and the, the pros and the cons. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. So soul, this is soul through my eyes. Yes. So this is actually, we, okay, this is the apartment that I lived across of. So I'm taking the photo in my apartment, and that's the photo of the, the apartment. But it looked the same almost, I think. So kind of it's kind of the same. But anyways, it kind of looked like that. I lived in Apgujong or um, Rodeo area at the time in Korea, Gangnam, kind of Gangnam style, everyone. So, so it's a kind of a ritzy neighborhood. But our apartments, you know, there's apartments that aren't that ritzy, but it's still very expensive. But anyways, thankfully, we got to live so close to town or the city. And um, you know, we basically, that's where we lived. And so the next slide, I like to walk the streets. They have amazing buildings, some you know, awesome. That's a Chinese restaurant, I believe. And it was just always fascinating. There's just so many, what are those called, guys? Lan Lan that's right, lanterns. I thought it was a fancy word. <laughs> Lantern, lanterns, and I thought that was really nice. And the next slide. So training, yeah, did that. Oh, pardon? So, so t uh, training, OK. So when I went to Korea, um, like officially, training started from 11 AM, because Korean people don't like to wake up early. So, <laughs> so it was like 10, 11 AM. And then we worked out, or we worked till, we practiced till 10 PM. And then at the time, you know, it's seriously like that. You live your life in the rehearsal room. You eat, you socialize, you do whatever, you make yourself, you know, you practice everything. It happens in the rehearsal room. Unless you have vocal lessons, which would be once a week, depending, and you would just go to a different um, teacher or something. So that was kind of the shift, you could say. And at the time, we didn't have, um, you know, we weren't celebrities yet, so we had to. You know, we were we were okay to um, go ride the subway, or ride the bus, or um, barely, rarely ride the taxi because it was really expensive from where we were at, which was Hadang, all the way back to you know Apgujong area. So, 10 p.m. the buses are gonna, you know, soon cut off and all this stuff. We would race to get the buses and things like that, and it was really fun. Like it was hard, but I enjoyed it. So that's why it was OK, because I, I enjoyed it. Like, this is what I wanted. So that's why it wasn't hard. It was work, but it was enjoyable. Um, also, um, in Korea, in Korea, they, OK, so this is weird, but I, don't, I think it's Asian culture, too. But um, they, to encourage you, they discourage you. So they'll say things like, why can't you do this better? Or why can't you do that? Or, well, da, 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 but 
it's, you know, maybe you guys can relate, but it's actually what I learned was that it's because they see the potential in you, and that's how they, you know, it's different from American culture, but that's how they um, show you that they care, that they, they want to push you and see more in you. So for me, that didn't work. Like, for me, I was like, no ways. Like, why do they hate me? Or like, am I doing it wrong? Why? And funny story. Um, so when we were doing Diva, who's, who knows the song Diva? Yay, a couple of you. So there's this dance move where we have to like jump up and down like this. So we have to move our hand like a circle, right? So the <laughs> choreographer kept saying, one, one guryo, one guryo. And I was like, OK, I'm trying. She keeps scolding me. And then I was like, I'm trying to make a circle. And then finally, like two, three months later, I finally realized one means circle in Korean, and I wasn't making a circle. Like she, so she kept saying circle, circle, circle. So I was making like an oval. And so I'm just saying like culturally, that was kind of hard. I was like, some words are difficult. So like you're telling me to do something, like color it blue, but I'm coloring it red, you know? So I was trying, but it didn't work. <laughs> now I get it, so yeah. So, all right, so now let's get into the K-pop world. That's a brief, you know, intro into the, you know, my training. And we can do more q and We're doing Q&A, so you guys can go more into depth what you guys want to, you know, ask. But now, let's see, K-pop world. Who, of obviously, you're here for K-pop, but who likes K-pop? Who listens to K-pop regularly? All right, wow. <laughs> your friend's supporting your arm. <laughs> yeah, totally. I used to listen to, you know, the, you know, the first gen Koreans, um, HOT. I went to their concert when they were in Hawaii. My, the person I was with, she got punched in the eye, elbowed in the eye, because the girls were crazy. They were like, ah, and then they elbowed her. Um, so that was terrible, but she's okay. So I guess that was my first taste of K-pop, but I loved H.O.T., I loved Finkel, SES. Um, you know, S uh, what's that? Finkel had Hyori Ani in there, right? I got to perform with her, and that was awesome, with her and Chiyun from 4 Minute. So we did that, and it was amazing. You can look online if you want to, but, um, but truth be told, at the time I was kind of sick, but I was trying my best. But anyways, that's the backstory, behind the scenes story. Okay, K-pop world, here we go. So I'm from the group After School. We were known to be a heavy performance girl group. So um, our concept wasn't cute, but we could go cute sometimes, but rarely. It was more like, you know, bang, we do um, like heavy drum, drum line stuff, and we really practiced for that. Um, so let's say I'm gonna give you a schedule with, um, you know, cause projects overlap. So even though we're, let's say we're gonna do drum line here, like bang, we're still, we were still um, promoting a different single. So in order to prepare for that, we would have to prepare months in advance. So what happened was, um, as I'll tell you a schedule of a K-pop star. Um, so let's say we have a show at one of the major broadcasting stations. We have to wake up at around 4 a.m. and go to the shop at least by 4.30, 5, 5 a.m., depending. And then you wake up and you're in, in hair and makeup for three hours. I, that's what I said. I said, why does it take so long? <laughs> like, why would it take so long? But it did, and now I understand. They do an excellent job, you know? So it takes three hours, guys, to look like that, okay? <laughs> With, um, like, literally, they look perfect, right? Well, let me tell you, they make it look easy, but there are specialists, there are amazing makeup artists, there are behind the scene people that do that, that are amazing at their craft, and they are all part of the team to, to get that look. So anyways, so we're at the shop for three hours, around 7, 8 a.m. We drive to the major broadcasting station, and then we uh, rehearse. And this, this is the best part for me, because literally, like all the celebrities are like you guys right here watching other cele ce celebrities perform. So it's so cool because they're just dressed in their regular clothes, really dressy sometimes, really nice. And they're just performing. Sometimes they have their outfits on, stage outfits. And so like for me, that was the best part about waking up early and just watching. Uh, and then um, after that, 
you would go through your turn, and then you wait, and then you wait, and you wait, and wait until it's finally showtime. And sometimes in between, there's other little um, things that happen, but that's, that's all right. This is the part where you know, we're getting ready to start the show, to start the live show. And so let's say that, that'll end about like hmm, 5 p.m., 5.30 p.m.-ish. So already, that's almost a whole 12 hours. And then after that, like I said, going back to bang, if we're prepping for that, um, we're going to have to practice, right? So we would go to the rehearsal room and practice for like, depending if we didn't have a schedule the next day for like hours, like literally four, five, six, maybe even hours. Like it's crazy. Um, it's a lot of commitment, a lot of work. So that's one schedule. That's one day. That's what it kind of could look like. Um, I would say it kind of was like that most of the times. Like it was just fast, 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 go, go, go. Christmas came, Christmas left, Christmas came again, and Christmas left again. It was just really fast, fast-paced life. And um, let's see. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So this is one of the first, sh I think this was a concept shoot. Um, so, you know, in K-pop, we do concept photo shoots. Um, and sometimes they don't get um, published. They're just for the company, and they want to see like how you fit, where you fit, if you're a good, you know, dynamic for the team, and things like that. So it's like um, researching slash experimenting in a sense. But it's really cool because I love photography and photo shoots. So that's what we did. Um, and then that's just me on the street at Apgujong, trying to catch a taxi. <laughs> And then this is Chiyon Ani, and that's me. We're backstage. I think this was at Singapore. And it's just great because we have some downtime, and we can um, just kind of talk to each other. They eat a lot of crackers and you know, you know, snacks and things like that. And anything you, you would do with your friend, like hanging out, aside from waiting to work, like that's what we would do, we'll either watch something or talk about life or things like that. So it's very normal. You know, and let's see next slide. So that's Reina, that's Lizzie, and I saw these girls before they were um, part of the group. So I don't know if you guys are familiar, but our girl group is actually like a school concept. So yeah, you know. Um, so it's like in a sense of you can graduate, which means you know you exit the group or you either enter as a new student, like you know, and you have like NSO or something like that you know, intro. And yeah, so these two girls were um, Yansip Sengs, which is, you know, uh, trainees at the time when we saw them, and then they became officially part of after school. And it was really awesome because even now, I still see them. I see all of everyone as, you know, just my sisters. Um, you know, we look at like Yui and Nana and stuff, and they, you know, it's so cool, their aura and all this stuff. But then to me, when I see them, I just see my sisters. And like when we were at the house, no makeup, eating tteokbokki, you know, just chewing our tteokbokki as loud as we want, whatever. <laughs> so they're my sisters. That's how I see them. And they're very normal and in a good way normal. Like they're just, they're human beings like you guys. Um, they just have a different platform. That's it. Yeah. Sure, yeah, thank you. Okay, so I want to tell you, like, this is actually a little bit scarier than, um, or not scary, more exciting and slash scary than performing in front of, like, 10,000 people or even more. We actually got to perform for more than 10,000 people um, at one concert. And the reason is, is because I can see all your faces. <laughs> I don't know what you're thinking. <laughs> When I'm performing at, uh, we're performing at a dream concert, let's say, that's over 10,000 people. You can't even see anyone's face. You can only see their light that they're holding up. Um, that's actually easier because, because, you know, you're just doing your thing, right? You can focus. I can still focus now, but I just, yeah, it's good to see you guys. Like, I'll see you. <laughs> All right. Okay. So... You guys know about the K-pop life. You have um, photographers. You have people always like taking photos of you or talking about you or complimenting you or even putting you down. Um, and, and back then, um, when I started, social media presence wasn't 
at large, it was just kind of was gaining momentum, but not fast, not quickly at the time. So um, yeah, that that was doing that, and now it's explosive. Like you want to find out about your celebrity, you just look at your phone, like immediately. Like you know the current update, you know the, the latest scandal, you know the latest um, happening, who got married to who, who's dating who, um, who's doing their concert here, there, you know what I mean? So it's so global. And um, it's just crazy because I'm looking at you guys here and you guys obviously aren't Korean. <laughs> and that's amazing because that's, you know how Professor Jess Jason was talking about, you know, how it's influenced, like how a Korean K-pop song can't be sung with English words. And that's kind of a, a perspective I didn't really think deep into about, but I realized that it's true. K-pop is has its own color, it has its own pop, has its own you know palette, and um, it's just really cool that there's so many different um, nationalities and things like that over here, and that it's it's yeah it is really global, and I can see that. And um, oh yeah, here Yui Oni and Kai Oni. This was at um, Singapore uh, Universal Studios. That's when they just opened. And um, we were riding the Jurassic Park ride. Well, it was the roundy one, the round one, not the dragon one, uh, not, the, not the dinosaur one. But yeah, it was, we got really, you know, soaked, but it was awesome. And that's Yui on me with me. She was my roommate. So who knows Yui? Yeah, you guys know Yui. Um, Yui on me was my roommate, so we, <laughs> we had bunk beds. <laughs> I slept on the top. <laughs> I like them, but not when you're tired at like 3 a.m. and you're like, oh. <laughs> and then you, you lay down and you realize you have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Someone can relate, right? You can relate. <laughs> so yeah. And then um, we did win awards. We did win awards. Um, we won a few, I believe, like Billboards Japan. We got to go to Japan. And um, we won at the major broadcasting um, stations for um, Notemune because of you. So, you know, so we, we, we were, you know, doing our thing and we got noticed for it. And that was great, you know. But let me tell you a secret. Um, it, doesn't, it didn't hit me when we got the award the first time. I was just like, what happened? <laughs> it's just like, wow, we're on the other side, you know. And it just, it takes time. At least it took time for me to soak it in. Yeah. And so now, K-pop. Now, it's not what it seems. So you know all the drama's kind of happening right now, right, 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 right. <laughs> Just acknowledging your nose. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's not what it seems. And I'm here to just tell you, I'm not going to sugarcoat K-pop in the sense of, you know, it, it's great because there's so many talented people. There's so much art you know, created, but also there is another side to K-pop, um, and that's where I struggled. And I'm not trying to discourage anyone, this is a disclaimer, of, of your dreams, of, of what you want to do, but maybe just kind of whatever you can grab from my, my insight, my experiences, maybe it could help you somehow make better choices than the ones I made. And yeah, so K-pop, not what it seems. So outside I, I look like that, but inside, I felt like that <laughs> sometimes, or I felt really quiet. And I'm just saying it in a sense of, you know, it was great. You meet people, you meet a lot of fancy people, you get to, you get service, which means like, you know, you're at a restaurant and they'll give you a free stew or something, you know, like there's a lot of privileges and advantages. But uh, aside from that, um, I did it, I wasn't okay inside. And I'm gonna tell you why, it's because it was, again, I said it was Christmas and then it was over and then it was Christmas again. Life was too fast. Um, I didn't have the time or the peace to um, really stop and think because my mind was just going all the time, my body was pushed all the time and um, I Googled myself and because sometimes I have to look for photos, right, for like this event. <laughs> So I did, and you know, they'll say like Becca after school, you know, what K-pop or something, and then be below that would be Becca, Becca after school, weight, weight gain or something. And that's one thing that I struggled with in K-pop because, remember, I was born 
in America, very, um, I'm like a banana, you know. I, I'm proud to be Asian, but I'm also, you know, proud to be American. And so <laughs> I was a banana. <laughs> and even my body type was a banana, like in a sense of like I couldn't, I wasn't, I couldn't be like, I was exaggerating, but like a thin, you know, really thin. Like my body shape and everything was different. And so that was really hard because I was trying to put on a shoe that didn't fit. So I would try really hard and be excited, like, okay, yeah, I'm going to lose like 20 pounds. I did. But then later, you're, you hit that 20 pound goal, and then what? I went back and worse. So, you know, they say, they talk about yo yo diet, and I was in disbelief, like, no, that's not going to be me. But it was. And that was one of the struggles that I had with weight. Because it's not you against yourself only. It's other people against you. So I'll tell you a really kind of, I'm only sharing this because, you know, I, I want to talk about the good stuff, but also the real stuff in a sense of what happened, my experiences. And so, so um, scale story. So I was at the shop one day, and that was when my boss really, or not, well, not my boss, but every, well, everybody, well, I needed to lose weight. And so I was like, OK. But I was on high alert in the sense of like people were like always on me. Like they would make comments. You know, their intention, again, was to you know, try to think of me, I guess. But it, to me, it was just hurting me. You know, comments like, oh, are you really going to eat that? Or is that, is that good? You know, um, do you, you know, why don't you eat this instead? So things like that was with around me for like everywhere. Like even like, it wasn't them trying to be mean. It was them just trying to think of me, but it wasn't helping. And so anyways, um, the scale story, back to the scale story. Um, so I was at the hair shop, got ready. And then what happened was we had to get weighed. And I'm not going to disclose the other member, but like I had to get weighed basically at the shop. And so the person who had the scale, I will not name that person. They're just doing their job. Uh, but um, <laughs> so we, we, guys, don't forget, like some people have, they have authority above them that have to do their jobs. I'm not saying like that was wrong. And maybe that person could have had better judgment, but again, like they're just doing their job and I can't get mad at them. But anyways, that happened and they were gonna do it outside where everyone was. And these are, you know, patrons of like, like the hair salon place. I'm like, what are we doing? And so thankfully one of my, um, the other girl that had to get that weighed too with me was like, let's go in there, you know, in the, oh, excuse me, in the room over there. And then I was like, okay, good. And so that's one of the things. Like weight is very, very, and you guys know, um, image is very important in K-pop. So, so that's that's a big thing. And um, another thing is, I w again I said like I wanted to be alone, but that wasn't a really healthy thing. But I wanted to be alone because I was always by people. I was at the rehearsal room for ten hours plus, and not sleeping and just drinking too much coffee, black venti americano and like every day and it was just really declining my health and um it was really rough and it's not it's not a normal lifestyle it's not it's great because you get to perform and you get to see yourself you're like wow i actually kind of made that or i did that wow that was a cool little dance move right there and you, but the best part at least i'm going to say this for me that kept me going was like, of course, I wanted to do it, but also, like, fans that I got to meet. They were the ones that really, um, like, I felt loved from, you know, at the time. Because I was alone again, like, everyone else. My parents were here. My mom was here. My sister was here. So, anyways, that happened. And um, it was really, yeah, lonely. You get lonely. Um, you look like you have a lot. And you've heard, seen, you know, celebrities recently who are amazing and talented, great singers, um, but sometimes they choose to, you know, discontinue on with life. And it's because, again, it's not what it seems. 
it's great if you, you like it for a moment, but it's not, it doesn't, it doesn't become enough. You always want more of something to fill your heart, you know? So, you don't, in the end, I realize what people want, even celebrities, what they want is, is love. They want to be genuinely loved. And it's not that fans don't give that. It's just, you know, you have your best friends, right? You have close people. You have people that you trust, even if it's just one person, right? Well, for me, it was really hard to trust people because it's either they, I felt like they wanted something from me or maybe because I was this person, that's why they wanted to be around me. And it was very hard to trust people. And even now, even, in, even right now, it's, it's hard to trust people because you, from your experiences, you, you could have gotten hurt, right? Who's gotten burned before? Yeah, a lot of us. So I'm just saying, like, it was even unhealthier at, in that kind of an environment where people were very, um, you know, shy or afraid, afraid to um, approach you because you're this celebrity, you know? But, yeah. So anyways, so basically weight and being alone, like loneliness, is very present in K-pop. It, it's, you know, it's... Yeah, it's it's a it's it's that too. It's not just pop music. It's not just producing music. It's not just making music videos. It's not just all this and all that. It really entails your human humanness too. Yeah. So, update now. What am I doing now? <laughs> well, my intentions were always to go back into music or, you know, make stuff. I like to make stuff, but uh, life is, again, always unexpected, unpredictable. So that's been on the back burner a little bit. But um, right now, I am going um, to study more uh, business um, at UH. And that's my plan. But again, life can be unexpected. But that's my plan. Uh, I'm serving. I'm singing at my church. And I'm working right now in the corporate world. Because you have to work. K-pop money will not last. I'm going to just tell you. Like, there is not... It's not, it's not, I'm not trying to, I don't want to portray that I was a K-pop star and I have this vast lifestyle. It's unrealistic. You're going to, I'm just going to hurt myself and, and things like that. So I'm just saying like, I do have a job and I like it a lot and I work in the corporate world. But again, I'm just telling you, it's, people look like they have a lot, but sometimes they really have to bend their wallet to get it like empty their wallets, because you have an image you have to uphold. So don't do that. You're going to hurt yourself. You're going to hurt your wallet. You're going to go in a place you don't want to go. So live in, within your means, guys. <laughs> and that's what it's humbled me, because when I was in K-pop, you have money coming in, and then you have it going out like water. I literally had a moment where I spent so much money in one time, and I was like, what did I just do? Like, after, like, after, after, after. Like, I'm talking about, like, years later. I'm like, why did I, why was I like that? It's just the people that you're around, and, you know, they have more money than you, let's say, and it's just you're in that lifestyle, and you think you have to be like that. But the I found that the people that are the, the most... Um, meaning like very cool, or I look up to them, are people that live within their means, and they love what they do, and they do it within where they're at. And then when they, let's say, they go forward, they, they have more resources, then they use that. You have to start with what you have now. Because if you try to get something that you don't have now, you always try, end up trying to get it, and you'll miss all this time to grow as a person. So that's a huge humbling lesson I definitely learned at... Um, you know, after K-pop, and um, yeah, I mean, it was great. I'm really thankful for my experiences. It's made me the person that I am right here, right now, and I was very shy, but now I'm not that shy, but I can be, I guess. I don't know. Not really, but um, yeah. Oh, yeah, this is now. <laughs> uh, so Kai and me, um got married in Hawaii, and it was awesome, and I got to be at the wedding. I actually got hit by a car crossing the street the day before, and I was supposed to sing for her, and it was painful, but I was okay. Anyway, so that's what happened. I got to be a part of her wedding. I was not going to miss it. 
So if you look under the bouquet, I caught it. <laughs> that means you're supposed to get married, right? <laughs> nah, 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 nah. But um, there's like a, like a, what is that? A wrap of, of what is it? A cast. It's, it's like a cast, but it's like a soft, like, wrap. So to hold my arm. Yep, there we go. And then if we go to the next one. Yes, please. Oh, so now I'm just kind of drawing, doing my own thing, hanging with my girls. And um, I'm just really loving life, guys. Um, I would say it's so much, it's a different season. And with my experiences with K-pop and, and being in that world, um, I would never trade it because, again, it's made me who I am. But I can say that right now, I've never been the happiest because I have real relationships. I can trust people. And not that I didn't have real relationships, like my unnies and my tongsengs and K-pop and you know things like that. They were great. But I'm just saying, like right now, right where you're at is not such a bad place. It's not a bad place. So um, I guess my challenge is, the whole reason why I wanted to do this talk was, of course, to talk about K-pop but also um, to say that, hey, be thankful for where you are. Try to be, because you'll never get this time back again. You'll never be in that seat with your friends. You'll never be um, drinking this drink, I don't know, that you're walking down the street with again. Like, be in the moment. And I guess the challenge that I have is that, you know, every choice, there's a consequence, good or bad. And um, there are costs, and there are things that you have to weigh, and you know that. But as you guys, you know, journey into life, there's going to be, um, yeah, there's going to be obstacles, but go for it and be wise, ask people, and yeah, enjoy your life right now, okay? <laughs> thanks, guys. Okay, thanks, uh, Rebecca. Um, we're going to do a question and answer session for the next 10, 20 minutes, okay? So I'm going to run around, and maybe you can help meet me halfway <laughs> so I don't have to run too much, okay? Um, raise your hand once I ask the word. Or, Rebecca, would you like to Yeah. Do oh, okay. sure. Pressure. Wait, we have to give them a second to think. Because yeah, <laughs> people questions? ask questions, and I'm like, I need a minute. <laughs> okay. Okay, anybody? Oh, right here. This gentleman right here. Okay, hold on here. Okay. Let me go to front a little bit. <laughs> Don't, please don't call me. <laughs> You're going to make Professor okay, Jason on. work out. Okay. All right. So, guys, when you, like, went into the K-pop world, what was uh -huh. the thing that you were like, oh, this went way against my expectations? Or sure. Or surprised you the most? So his question was, what was something when I went into K-pop, like, that was, it didn't meet my expectations? It was unexpected, yeah. Um, I would say everything, <laughs> almost everything. <laughs> Because I thought I was just going to have fun and make music videos and do photo shoots. But there's, it's not like that all the time, guys. There's a lot of, um, it's good. This is good. Practice. That's not the bad part. It's just, it doesn't look like what you guys, like what you guys see with K-pop stuff. It doesn't look like that. It doesn't feel like that. It's not like that. So for me, everything. It was, it became like, oh. You know, there were certain rules, there were certain dynamics, certain um, things. So I would say literally everything was unexpected. It didn't meet really, it didn't meet my expectations. I was like, oh my gosh, what? <laughs> Shall we do that? Sure, anybody? Sure, back there. <laughs> back there, the, the girl on the okay, lady. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. Where in Hawaii did you live? We're in Hawaii. So I moved around a lot because my mom, where parents were divorced, it was like really crazy. So um, I first, I was, I grew up and I was born in, in downtown. And then I went to Eva. And then I moved back into town, like Salt Lake, Macaulay area. And then I went to Salt Lake. And then I would move back to downtown. And then like, it was just like that, a lot of moving. Yeah, but I guess I consider myself as a townie, but I love the far side. <laughs> sure. <laughs> awesome. Um, out of the many K-pop stars, who was one your favorite and who do you regret not like working with? 
my gosh, I, I do have a regret. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I worked with, um, I really met a lot of amazing p to people, but I would say Hyori and you was definitely like a shocker. Like for me to work with the super A-list, um, K-pop, solo artists, you know, at that time was, and still, she's like known, she's like an icon in Korea. And I was just like, what an honor like for me to be chosen and to work with Chion for four minute. So I would say Hyori Ni. And I did a show, the one that I regret, on uh, the show um, with 2 p.m. <laughs> Who remembers that? <laughs> oh. <laughs> so we were supposed to choose partners. And I think Nikun <laughs> chose me at the time. And I said no, because I didn't know what was going on. I thought you had to choose the real person, you know, like I didn't know anything about, you know, stuff. But anyways. Nikun was like, huh, and I kind of was like, no. And I was like, no, why did I do that? <laughs> oh, I know why, but I'm not going to say why. But, <laughs> but yeah, I regret that. I would have said yes. <laughs> Anybody else? Sure, this gentleman right here. Oh, and then the gentleman in the front after, yeah. I'm sorry, what? All right. Hi there. Hi. <laughs> sorry for the introduction. OK, no, this one's fine. more of an introspective one. Okay. So. If you're to tell yourself, your 16 or 17 year old self, when you went ba back when you're in after school mm -hmm. or started auditioning, mm -hmm. if you can send them one message or tell them one message, mm -hmm. one wise word, one sense of a sure. wisdom or something, mm. what would you tell them? I would say, I would say, I would tell myself, hmm. Okay, the one thing is because I, I would tell myself this, but I already told myself it at the time. And it's because someone told me actually, they actually told me, hey, Becca, like this isn't going to be forever. Because K pop, you have a lifespan, right? And you'll get older. So someone told me, hey, you need to have a plan B. So at the time, I had an idea, a timeline of, okay, I want to I wanna do this for this long. If I don't get to where I want to go, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go. And so that was kind of a factor of why I left, but not the whole piece. So I would tell myself definitely, again, um, well, someone told me, but I would tell myself because I didn't know yet. Um, I would say that, hey, have a timeline, have a goal. What do you want to do with K-pop? Like every, I said I wanted to help people, but go into more detail. Like what is your end goal? Like what do you want to do for the rest of your life in a sense of, not just help people, but how. Like, how do you want to help people? How do you want to gather your resources? And just be more detailed about it. So I would tell myself, where do you want to shoot? And how are you going to get there? Further than K-pop. Yeah. That's what I would tell myself. Um, <clears throat> you said that you sang Christian songs for your audition? Christian songs, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so does your Christian faith play a part in giving you strength? Um, in, in, did your Christian faith give you strength in your uh, K-pop survival? Sure, uh, yes, definitely. Um, it, it was a big part. It's the reason why it kept me going, the big part. And uh, I'm not gonna try to make you guys feel uncomfortable. I'm not trying to put my values, my beliefs on you guys, but it is a core of me. And um, that is who I am. And um, it, was, it was a huge part of me to keep going forward because it was an opportunity. And I was like, okay, I wanna, do what I can. I want to help a lot of people. I want to, you know, you know, do what I can to be a good example of just just doing the right thing, you know. But I was young, so I didn't make a lot of good choices. But yes, I would say, even now I don't make the best choices, but that's all right. <laughs> but um, I would say yes, it was, and it helped me to stay away from things, and helped me to say yes to things, and it helped me to. Um, have a conscience, like I really had a conscience, despite how fuzzy it was. So I was really thankful for that. Someone Thank you. From here, so that I don't sure, yeah. Right anybody, so just from here, anyone from here, raise your hand. Okay, right here. This I'm gentleman. And then we need okay. a girl next. We need women, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> no, we, we not need not the women. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm not trying to tower over you. Hi, I'm Kenny. Um, I actually got inspired to make music because of K-pop. And sure. So it's nice to know you're from Hawaii and yeah. you know, you're, you're moving on because I'm also moving on with, you know, how I got inspired. Now I'm going back to school yeah. for business and music. So what oh, kind of music nice. are you? 
making? Making? Um, well, I really like, so I went to recently a Korean Bailey Ray concert, and it was awesome. So I like that kind of music. I like acoustic, very like lovely sounding, but, I, but it's hard because I like trance music, I like EDM, I like indie, soft rock, alternative, I like K-pop, I like pop, I like rock music, J-pop, oh, I do like J-pop. I do, and then um, I just have so many genres, and because I worked in the industry, I know how to kind of, you know, adjust in a sense, okay, we're going with this more poppy song, okay, we gotta sound like this. So for me, it's hard, but to be honest, I really love singing, like, lovely songs, like acoustic music, so yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, you know, my handle is uh, Beck, B-E-K-F-O-R-U-M, <laughs> but anyways, yeah, thank you. Go ahead, and then we'll go ahead and get you after. Out of all your uh, performances, or Sorry. like, like throughout the whole after school, mm -hmm. like where you were, what was your favorite moment? My favorite moment. So, do you mean like my favorite song in that moment, or just in general, like a stage okay. performance in general? Uh, I really liked. My favorite was. Can I have two favorites? Okay. <laughs> it's not that because it's so moody. I like moody stuff. <laughs> so I, that was one of my favorites, performing that. And I loved our outfits, our suits. It was um, suit style, one piece suit kind of ish. It was awesome. So I loved the concept of that and performing it. And also, I really enjoyed it. And the second one was Bang. Because then that's the opposite of moody. It's more like, yeah, I'm going to get you, you know, while you're dancing. <laughs> but not in a bad way, but you just have all this energy from the song. So that was like my two favorite moments of um, doing that. So, yeah, does, does that answer your question? Okay. Sure. Hi. Oh, I thought we were going to go over there after. Oh, after her, then we can go over there. Yeah. Okay, so what has been your craziest, like, fan mail? The craziest thing you've ever Fan gotten? mail. Oh, my gosh. I, I'm not doing this. I'm not showing you this because this is what you should do for your fans. Like, again, even a letter is amazing. Um, but what, if you're saying if I got something in the mail, I got... I got like a watch in the mail. <laughs> I'm just saying like, actually this one. And I use it, I still use it. And it, this actually, it motivates me. So thank you, Tomo. <laughs> but um, I'm just saying like, those stuff, stuff is all good, but I have letters still that I keep um, because it means a lot, like when I read it, especially when I had a hard time. So yeah, even though you don't get a response back, you know, I read my letters, so I'm just saying, hey, there's a very high chance that they read theirs too. Yeah. Okay. Oh, right there. Okay, and then we have one request. Sure. And maybe one or two more. Yeah. We have to kind of end this is here. fun. <laughs> okay. okay, I'll go on Okay, sit How's it going? Good. How are you? Yeah. So from what we were told, uh, the K-pop business has a very strict guideline. For example, you know Hyuna from 4 Minute? Mm-hmm. Yeah, she, uh, she lost her contract because she fell in love with her co-star. Was there any uh, like rules, like guidelines that you had to follow when you were in the K-pop business? Uh, for me, I wasn't, I wasn't, I didn't have those guidelines. Um, for me, everything is different, especially it goes into liability. It goes into, you know, a company, how big they are and things like that or, or what they want. But for me, I wasn't so tied down. I was actually encouraged by my boss to find a boyfriend. <laughs> because he thought that that would solve my loneliness in Seoul, but that would have actually been worse, right? <laughs> if I meet the wrong person, especially when I'm not that healthy inside in the sense of not doing well, it's not going to fix it. <laughs> but so I'm just saying, like, for me, it was the reverse, but I didn't have any clauses that were unique in that way. Yeah, but they do have that. They do have um, unique contracts. Um, do you have a favorite K-pop artist right now? Oh, oh, my friend Ki went into the military. I like him. He's so cool, you guys. Yeah, I would say him and Suyong. And it might be a little biased because I know them too, but um, I really like them for who they are, and I also think they they really put in the work. So I would say I look up to them. Yeah. 
So rather than just, oh, they look great and cool, I would say like even more deeper is they work hard. Not that other people don't, but I really look up to them as people that I know. Yeah. Sure. Hi. So I have Hi. two questions. Sure. Uh, my first question is. Yeah, oh, we, can do, we can do two. Oh, right. <laughs> okay, so my first question is, what was the hardest transition, like coming into the K-pop world or getting out? Oh, and then yeah. my second question is, um, what was the biggest culture shock for you, or oh. was there any? Oh, yeah, there were. Um, so I'll go to your first one, transition. That's a good, these, those, these are really good questions. Um, all of you guys were. But transition was really, really hard. Again, I came from a world fast-paced, money, um, you know, just glitz. And then when I came back to Hawaii, it was so calm. <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh. Like, you know, that it was still inside me. My mind was still running. And, and um, it was hard in a sense of people still noticed who I was. And it, that was OK. But it just was a little bit harder to feel normal, I guess. And it wasn't going to happen immediately. Only now I feel, I feel like the transition is, is more, because I'm OK with, like, that's what I did, and and it's not the whole of me. There's more of me, so I would say the transition took a while, but it was good because I got to find out more things about myself. It was hard, guys. It was really hard transitioning back. It, it's very humbling. It's very humbling. And then two, for her um, question about um, culture shock, I did get a lot of culture shock in Korea, but I didn't know I was in shock. <laughs> I realized um, language and the way, like, the hardest part was um, values and also the way you would see things perspective. And because, again, I came from American cult, check, check, if I, okay, sorry. I came from American culture and it, it was so different from Korean in a sense of, again, in America we encourage, in Korea we, you know, you get disencouraged to actually be encouraged. And um, just that stuff was the hardest part for me because I didn't understand prop the way that, um, you know, the Korean culture um, communicated and also how they were together, like how they meshed, how they worked. So that was very hard for me because I was just put into a spot to work and kind of figure it out. It didn't. I couldn't figure it out. Okay, so you know how you were talking about what kind of music you like? Yeah. What do you think about the Hispanic music? Like the oh, yeah. Cito? It makes me dance. <laughs> 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 I love that. I love South America and all that stuff. I like anything. There's so much energy and feel. I think we can have time for one more. One more question. Yeah. Yes, uh, please. One more. Uh, please, uh, Becca, please tell me who. Anybody? I knew someone was going to ask me that. Not today. Thank you, though. <laughs> I'm just talking today. <laughs> Thank you. Anybody else? One more. Let's get someone in the front. You. <laughs> you. Who? Who? OK, sure. Right here. Oh. oh, we can go. OK, we'll do two more. Two right more. there and then right here. All right? All right. OK, this is a random question. Sure. But do you have a sister named Grace? Yeah. OK, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I should be scared. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, it's on the every a lot of people know. I think. Yeah. Okay. And final question. Any oh, right anyone? Uh, With the last one right oh, here. Oh, we have actually. Young one. Okay, sure. Yeah, one more here, and then okay. one more there. I'm sorry. Um. So, like, when you got scouted, did the Pledis Entertainment paid for the expenses, or you had to? Uh, <laughs> oh well. In that. the beginning, they pay for you, and then in the, in the end, you pay it back. <laughs> <laughs> And nothing is free. <laughs> yeah, it's not. Well, I'm just saying, like, it's not free. Yeah. I don't know the extent and the details, but it's not. Yeah. It's kind of like an investment. It's an investment to you. And then, yeah. So I don't want to go too much detail into contracts because everyone is different. But I will say that it's, um, it's nothing is free in that sense, in this world. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Question. Yeah, sure. Um, before going to Korea, how well did you know the language? And what is your favorite Korean dish? A Korean dish. Ooh, two questions. Um, for me, I learned the language when I was younger, but more survival phrases like I'm hungry, pickle pile, pop juice, you know. Um, but 
but I would say that uh, I knew how to read and write because something inside of me, I really feel like it was wisdom from God, but I learned Korean in, in, a, in about a month or a month and a half, like reading and writing. It was really fast. It was really fast because I really wanted to do it. So maybe it was a month and a half, yeah. Anyways, I'm not trying to make me like, oh, I'm a fast learner, but, but that it happened very quickly. And then I went to Korea and I got to exercise that. I got to use my skills. So I got to use my, use my language skills and grow them because I had to ride the subway and read the words. And I don't want to read the, you know, the, the English version of the words. I want to be like, okay, this is yoksamdong, you know, yoksamdong. And, you know, I exercise that. And my favorite Korean dish is tteokbokki. I love tteokbokki. I like mochi. <laughs> so that's a spicy rice cake. <laughs> So I think that's that's it. Okay. Thank you so Sorry, much, guys, for being thank here. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> so of course, thank you. All right.